Hi everybody, Chris Petrie here. Thanks for coming by. Let's uh, do some flowers and some fruit on a table. We're going to do some still life in watercolor and we're going to do some contour drawing when we first start here. Um, so, um, if you're new, um, there's a lot of videos I made uh, on contour drawing. Um, you can always uh, go into the, uh, YouTube and type in contour drawing Chris Petri and you'll you'll see a at least uh, three or four videos that kind of cover contour drawing um, to a good degree that you'll be able to kind of see how I do it in a more you know step-by-step -step fashion versus just you know doing it here kind of more quickly but, but for this video we're going to do some flowers um, in a, in, a, in a vase with some fruit and vegetables on uh, maybe like a table. So it'll be like a, a nice table still life with flowers and fruit and some vegetables and so forth. So let's do it. Let's do it quickly. Um, this would be a nice composition we can do to get warmed up before we do, let's say, a larger painting where we're going to maybe we just need to do some exercises, you know, kind of like um, before we play sports, we'll, you know, do a little bit of warm ups and stretches and so forth. So let's consider this like a, a small composition. That we're going to do just to get warmed up and um, get ourselves, uh, you know, into the mood and, and uh, excited about uh, doing some painting here and drawing. So I'll start off and I'll take I'll start with my vase here and just uh, I'm going to go quickly here. I'm just moving along here, looking at a reference photo. Got an orange here. Green pepper. <clears throat> and we're kind of just contour drawing. We're just kind of going through the drawing, looking at a few, few looking at the shapes. Not so much is this in a plate or a or a tomato or an apple, just getting a feel for the overall shapes of everything and there's some forms here, uh, tablecloth. So we'll try to capture some of the lines of the tablecloth here. And the, that's like the back of the table. So we'll capture the back of the table there and we'll start to get into some of the flowers here. And I'm just going to go quickly um, just to get the overall idea. Again, this is a loosening up exercise, so I'm not really... I'm getting too bogged down with um, every single detail that I might see. I'm just kind of getting the overall shapes that I see and Here I'm not going to get too worried about this uh, issue with the, so I'm going I'm to erase that line, the original line I made for the edge of the table, so that we'll make the edge of the table back further, and that's all really, and then that should be pretty good. I'll draw a shadow line here. Just to remind me where to put some details. And this might be the front edge of the table. So we'll go here, do that. This way we can kind of know that we're going to have some shadow through here. And then we'll just go in and we'll just have some fun, enjoy. My, my 
pallet is ready to go. <clears throat> and if um, this is my standard pallet. Uh, if you type in uh, my pallet, Chris Petrie, on YouTube, you'll see I go over all my colors, what colors I use for my pallet, the names of the colors, the brands that I use for the most part. So we're ready to go. These are all fresh uh, squeezed uh, tube paint. That's real important. Uh, I wouldn't try painting watercolors with uh, dried dried paint in, in a palette. It's always got to be fresh and spruced up, at least spruced up with some water at the minimum, a uh, half an hour to an hour before you paint. But fresh squeeze is good. That's really the best way to go. And then we'll, we'll uh, grab a round brush, some fresh clean water. That's all we really need, a fresh, fresh clean water. A round brush. Uh, this is a red sable brush here. And I usually carry it. I have like a tissue. I hold, put that there just to take some water off the brush sometimes. And we can start in. We'll, um, we'll go into some darker values. So the first thing I'll try to do is maybe some of the fruits. They're, they're pretty uh, dark in tonal value. So I'll put out some red, cadmium red, some alizarin crimson, uh, maybe a little burnt sienna, a little bit of rose matter, and we'll get some paint on the painting so we can kind of start to see the tonal values here. And we'll go in and we'll get some orange, cadmium orange, cadmium lemon yellow. And here the goal is we're, we're just going to try to go, we're going to try to go fast. So I'm just putting more color on the palette. We'll put in some shadow colors. That's uh, cobalt blue, cerulean blue, a little bit of uh, raw umber, raw sienna. We'll go in and get some green for our pepper. We can add some cobalt blue to the green to get a little more of a darker shadow under there. Then I'll just take a, a damp brush, rinse it off. I rinsed it off in my clean water. I dried it off on the tissue and then I can do a little for some, some light, a light effect on the side. And I can do the same thing for the, for the orange. Okay, and then we're going to just uh, a little bit of a shadow color for the tomato. We're starting to get some good color here. We'll do another tomato over here on the plate. Putting some more uh, paint on the uh, palette, some mineral violet, purple, and alizarin crimson. These could be a couple onions on the plate here, and we can leave them kind of light.
darker. So we'll put some uh, straight paint, some cadmium red, straight cadmium red there. Then we again rinse off the brush, dry it off a little. A little white there. Then we can some mineral violet. You can get a little shadow under there, on the, under the plate. A little raw sienna, just to change up that shadow color a little. And some cerulean, cerulean blue for the shadow side of the, the vase here. And we would we would warm it up a little bit at the base, maybe. I'm going to some flower colors. I will do some splashing here just to loosen things up a little bit. And then we can mix up some greens here, olive green, sap green, green green, a little bit of cad cadmium lemon yellow, a little bit of French ultramarine blue. And if you have a little issue with some of the paint, Grab a tissue and just blot it up quick. And variety is good, so I'll, that's why I mixed up those different greens there. Uh, I didn't want to keep the green just one green. I mixed up like three different greens and then added some cadmium yellow, so you can kind of see there's a lot of variation of my green mixture and that kind of really helps to keep things looking uh, fresh and and loose and, and uh, interesting. I use my brush strokes, you know, plants and things, they grow out toward the sunlight, so I try to capture that with my brush strokes. And then we can go in and do some Interesting uh, colors on the on 
on the uh, tablecloth so I would mix up the colors on the tablecloth too as well kind of give a nice um, cobalt blue, mineral violet again changing the colors and making things interesting really goes a long way and uh, we can do the shadow under here and then add some maybe a little bit of raw sienna just to break up the color a little bit a little red here then we can get some darker uh, tonal values that's a uh, cobalt blue mineral violet And sometimes we could add just that little darker bit of shadow. That'll that'll dry lighter. So right now it's looking pretty dark, but once it, it dries, it'll it'll blend in a, a little more. And then maybe we'll warm up the we'll warm up that that back wall with a little bit of uh, cadmium orange. I'm just having fun here, uh, doing some interesting different brush strokes to. Again, warm up that back wall. And then sometimes you, sometimes you can add a little extra bit of interesting color to draw the person's eye that's going to view the painting. It makes the um, the viewer can look around the painting a little more so if we put those little bit of interesting colors on the uh, sides here it kind of acts as an interesting uh, bit of color and I tone it down a little bit I don't want to go too but enough that it's and then some splashes and Again, a fun exercise, just warming up here and having some fun in the studio. I'm adding a little more shadow here and there. And again, just to do a little more interesting uh, couple of spots of paint here and there.
<clears throat> could do a couple uh, a couple more lines here and there if you want. Like this could be more patterns on the you can decide what you want to do is how much detail you want to do, but I would say this is about it. We we don't want to go keep going too much more with details and then it starts to look too busy and too fussed over. So I think that's a good place that we could just say, hey, this is a great little composition we did. Some flowers, a vase, some fruits and vegetables, nice tablecloth, some nice light in the picture coming from the upper side of the painting this way. So we see the light on this side of the vase and on this side of the fruit over here. And that gives us a nice feel of light and uh, looseness and freshness with the flowers. And um, I think we have a good composition here and we can practice on this and have fun and enjoy. All right, so we'll see everybody next time. Happy painting everyone and we'll see you soon. Bye-bye.